Hi, and welcome to My Math Source. Uh, in this video, we are going to cover a distant rate time problem. And specifically, we're going to be dealing with a specific type of uniform motion. Now, uniform motion is basically when an object is moving without changing its speed or rate. And we're going to look at three different types of uniform motions in different videos. And in this one, we're specifically dealing with something that is directly related to the formula distance is equal to rate times time. And so we're going to utilize this formula in a problem solving method. Now, the three main types of motion that we have is motion in opposite directions as seen in this animation, also motion in the same direction. And last of all, round trip, where you may see in this, this cyclist rides a certain direction and then turns around to complete his round trip, coming right back home, covering the same distance. Now, in this problem, we're going to look at how we can utilize one of those motions to solve uh, what can be looked at as a complex question, but really is not. So this problem says a ski lift carried James up a mountain slope at the rate of six miles per hour, and he skied back down parallel to the lift at 34 miles per hour. The total trip took 30 minutes. How far did he ski and for how long? So two things that we're looking for, but what we want to definitely pull out is that we want to state the type of motion and draw a sketch. Now, I've made it a little bit more animated. Uh, and so what you would do is just have a simple sketch. But this animation can greatly assist us. Now, it's a round trip because he's going up the lift, as seen in the animation. And then as he gets to the top of the mountain, he's going to ski right back down, skiing downhill the same distance. And so what you would have is just a nice little sketch. Uh, for me, I'm just going to turn this horizontal to make it easier to work with, with the space that I have. Now. Second thing we need to do is to describe the two motions. He's going up and he's coming down, up on the lift, down skiing. And we have to allow for one of those to be our main variable. We're going to choose James skiing time to be the main variable simply because the question says, how far did he ski and for how long? So that allows us to choose which motion up or down uh, that we're going to have as our main variable. And that's going to be T, T for time because T is going to represent his skiing time. And then the lift time that we need to find is going to be related. They did not give that either, as you notice in the question. And so one way that we can find out what his time is in terms of the lift is to think about what is the total trip time. Now, the total trip time here was 30 minutes. And so just to give an idea of how we can get uh, a verbal model for this, if James took 10 minutes skiing, well, how much time was he in the lift? Well, 30 subtract 10 would be 20, so he spent 20 minutes in the lift. Similarly, if he took 5 minutes, then that would be 30 subtract 5, and likewise, 30 subtract 3. Now, we do this because it can allow us to help us to uh, create an expression, 30 subtract t. And so then we could take that 30 subtract t and use it within our problem. But there's one issue that we have here, is that 30 minutes is not in hours. And the question is in hours. We have our miles per hour. And so we're just going to transfer our minutes into hours by simply saying, well, how many, well, how much is 30 minutes in hours? Well, we say a half an hour, so that's 0 0.5. And so we have 0 0.5 T as our second expression. Now we're going to make a chart organizing the facts and then label our sketch. So our chart looks similar, similarly to this. We have our lift is going up, our, then we're going to ski back down. Now, when we're skiing down, we're heading down, well, James is heading down at 34 miles per hour. Now, the time that it took him to get down there, well, we just found that to be T. And so since distance, as we saw in our very beginning, is equal to rate times time, that's simply 34 times T or 34T. We can do the same thing with the lift going up. Uh, we find out what our rate is. Our rate is six miles per hour as seen in the question. And our time, we just found that expression to be a half an hour subtract whatever his skiing time is or a 0 0.5 subtract t our distance is simply the rate times the time and we have to be careful here because our time is an expression so we have to say six times the quantity 0 0.5 subtract t the order of operations or pemdas really comes into play here now we're going to utilize our thinking caps a bit more uh, we're going to now use the sketch and table to write the equation that will help us to solve for t so uh, let's just look at what our lift is one more time. We have our, our distance for our lift going up, the lowercase l, uh, rather subscript, is equal to 6 times the quantity 0 0.5 subtract t. And then our skiing down, 
And I put here D subscript S to represent our distance going down by skiing is 34 T. So just thinking about it, what can we say about the distance is going up and skiing back down? Now remember, I made mine a bit horizontal for space, but if you look at the dimensions or basically the distance, they are the same. And we can use that, the concept that our distances are equal to come up with our equation. Since the distance traveled in the lift is equal to the distance traveled skiing, then that means our distance in the lift, which is six times the expression 0.5 subtract t, is going to be equal to the distance traveled skiing, which is 34 t. And now we have our equation. Now make some room, and we're going to solve that on the side. Now remember, when you're multiplying a number by an expression, you need to distribute by multiplication into that expression. Every term is being multiplied by the six. So six times a half is three, and six times t is six t, or negative six t. So we have three subtract six t equals to 34 t. And we can solve that some more by simply adding the six t. We're gonna collect like terms on uh, either side of the equation. Put our t's on the right side and leave the number by itself. And we do that by doing the opposite operation with the same number. So we're gonna add six t. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. On the left side, those six t's are canceling. That 34t plus 6t is going to give us 40t. And so we have a new equation, 3 equals to 40t. Now we want t by itself. So we want to uh, divide because that's the opposite operation that's going there. So we're going to divide by the same number and what you do on one side of the equation, do to the other. And so 40 divided by 40 is equal to just t itself. So we have t equals to 3 over 40. Now that represents, we want to make sure we write it down sometimes, our skiing time in hours. And so if we wanted to know what it was in minutes, we can simply just do a quick conversion by simply saying 3 40th of 60 minutes. And, you know, because we want to make sure we get the proper rate, we can put 3 40th of an hour times 60 minutes in an hour per hour. And our hours cancel out and we simply get four and a half minutes when we multiply that. You can use a calculator to do that. And so we have four and a half minutes. So that means we have how long it took. We just need to find out how far and that can be quickly found by substituting back into our formula. So I just modified our chart a bit by putting miles per hour. I really like to have our units there so that they cancel out correctly and we don't get the units wrong. So we have three fourths of an hour. So when we times our rate times that three fourths, three fortieths, sorry, of an hour, we're going to have our hours to cancel out and 34 miles times the three fortieth gives us 102 over 40 miles. We could quickly find that answer and that equals to 2.55 miles. And there we have it. Our answer is James skied for 2.55 miles and for four and a half minutes. And that's how you do a problem of that nature.